Despite living in a world that most people think is all glamorous and fancy, celebrities also have their trials and tribulations. Join us as we explore their most critical moments in these 911 calls involving some of America's most famous people. In 2018, Justin Bieber found himself trailed by paparazzi, leading to a distressing 911 call. 911 emergency, what are you reporting? Hello, um, I have like five cars following me. Okay, where are you at? I'm located um, on the freeway in Los Angeles. Okay. Um, I'm passing Burham Boulevard. What freeway are you on? I'm on the 101 Which south. Headed, um, pa I'm passing Burham Boulevard. Okay, are, you know the people that are following you? No, I don't. I, they're, I, they're, I think they're, um, but they're driving, re they're driving really reckless. Okay, so are you sure they're following you or are they just driving crazy? No, no, I'm 100% they're following me. Okay, what is, what are they doing to you? They're just, they just will not stop following me. And you're on the freeway? Yes. Okay, and what's your name? Justin. Okay. What's your last name? Um, Johnson. Okay. You're on the southbound 101? Yes. Okay. What type of car are you in? I'm in a Fisker. A what? A Fisker. F-I-S-K-E-R. What kind of car is that? Um, it's a, um, a Fisker. Okay. <laughs> and what lane are you in? I am in the uh, far right lane. Or far left lane, sorry. And how many vehicles are following you? Uh, I think three. What type of vehicle is it? Um, it is a, a Honda or a Toyota. Like a RAV4? Uh, a Toyota RAV. Uh, it's like a no, it's like a it's a car. And then I have like a uh, um a blue Toyota. They're all like uh I think they're um what they call uh, hybrid car. A hybrid car. Yeah. Okay. And they're still following behind you right now? They're still, uh... Okay. It was basically what happened was I just, uh... I was, I was out, I was out, I was trying to go fast so that I could lose these people, and I got pulled over. Okay. And then the, the police told me if they were, if, if they kept following me to, to call, call again. Okay. Gotcha. To call in. Okay. I think I have your log already on here. What? I have your call on here already. Okay. So you were already you were stopped at Tampa, right? I was. And then they're still calling. Okay. But it wasn't like they they're the ones that are driving reckless, and now I'm I'm the one that's you know, and and I'm just trying to to like not have them being on my tail. Right Absolutely, now. yeah. Before I was driving fast so that I could so that I could try to get away from them. Right. And I got pulled over myself. No, right. I've seen that earlier. That's that's the craziest thing ever. And I tried to explain it, and then when I tried to explain it to the police officers, uh -huh. they were being very like, like not nice about. It. They were just like, "Well, you, you, you waive your, uh, your, um, your right to uh, privacy when you, because you're a celebrity." Right. But that makes absolutely no sense when they're the ones like, I know I'm driving fast, but it's like they're they're the ones being dangerous. Like I don't. And, no. then, to, and then he was just running all the. Let, he let all the paparazzi just around my vehicle while he was doing the whole like like station. Okay. Which is super just like I felt that, like he didn't even pull me to the side. Like he could have at least pulled me to a side parking lot or something. He just did it right in the middle. He didn't care. He kept saying roll down my window when I was trying to like at least you know I I just felt very like. Okay, where Justin? Can you tell me where you are right now? What exit are you passing? I'm passing Music Center Walt Disney Concert Hall. What's that? I'm passing Broadway, Temple Street. Okay. Hold on. As Justin Bieber's fame continued to soar, so did the relentless pursuit of paparazzi, eager to capture every moment of his life. On that fateful day in 2018, Bieber's usual drive was marred by the ominous presence of multiple vehicles tailing him, prompting a distress call for help. Surrounded by the intrusive glare of camera lenses, Bieber's anxiety escalated, fearing for his safety amidst the relentless pursuit. 
the 911 call captured his apprehension as he sought refuge from the relentless chase. His voice tinged with unease as he described the unnerving situation. The incident underscored the dark side of fame, where privacy becomes a luxury, and ordinary activities are overshadowed by the relentless pursuit of the paparazzi. In June of 2012, Grammy-winning artist Usher found himself facing an unsettling situation at his Georgia home, a trespasser claiming to be his wife. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Yes. Okay, I can barely hear you. I have a trespasser in my, home, my front door. Okay, the person inside your home, do you know who they are? No, 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 not inside my house. They're at my front door. They're at your front door? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you give me a description of them? On my property, my address. I can't get your address. Can you give me a description of the person in your yard? In your front, at your front door? Personally, ma'am. Uh, they came earlier to my house. It was escorted off from my property. They come back. And now it rings in there, it's at my front door. Okay, can you tell if it's a male or a female? Okay, did she tell you her name? Ma'am, I don't know this woman. Okay, that's fine. And how long has she been there? I looked at uh, She rang my doorbell. Okay, but do you know how long she's been there? Probably as long as, uh, as, long as she's rang the doorbell. I mean, who knows? She could have been standing out there for a long time, across the street, whatever may have been. But um, she's still at my front door. Okay. And your name, sir? Hello? Yes. And what's your name? My name. Okay. And do you see any suspicious vehicles or people or other people inside the neighborhood? No, ma'am. I don't see anybody else. Okay. I'm going to stay on the phone until the officer arrives. Just let me know if anything changes. Two children in this home. Um, there are three adults in the house. And um, this uh, young lady, apparently, was a bit delusional. She came to my house earlier today. Um, ring the doorbell and was oddly let into my home. Once uh, they realized this was not a woman who um, anyone knew, she was asked to leave the house. I was not home. Okay, do you have a gate around your home? Yes. It's a gated community, but somehow. Is there a gate code for the officer to get in? Gate code? Yes. Yeah. I, I live in a, um, a gated community. Okay. With a, with a guard, somehow she, I don't know, got into the, um, I got into the community. I don't know how she got in. And did you meet with the officer earlier when he came out the last time? Or? I was not with the officer. Man. I wasn't okay, that's fine. Well, yeah. just let me know if anything changes. I remain on the phone with you. All right, of course. Okay, and are there supposed to be any vehicles in your front yard or anything like that? No, ma'am. Okay. And is she still knocking right now? She's sitting at in my front door. Okay. okay. I do have two officers en route to you. Okay, you still hear her at the door? Don't hear her. See, I have cameras at my home. I'm at my front door. She's just sitting there. I don't know how long she's going to be there. So I asked her to leave the uh, premises today. If she did, of course. Well, there's a unit turning to the neighborhood right now. Okay. I think that she's plugged up some device or something to my house and is charging her like iPad or something like that as a point to my front door. She's sit sitting at my front door. She's obviously a fan of some sort. Okay, it should be off the on scene right I now. She was a little delusional. That there was an officer that came here earlier today and asked this lady to leave my home. Okay, and do you see the officer outside right now? He should be in front of your home right now. She's walking towards the, towards the house. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the line. He'll probably just most likely ring your doorbell when he's ready to speak with you. Usher placed a calm 911 call after spotting an unknown person at his front door, a woman with an iPad. Upon arrival, police discovered Darshall Jones Rakestraw seated by Usher's door. She claimed to be the singer's spouse. Usher expressed concern for the safety of his children and household, puzzled by the woman's presence in their gated community. Jones Rakestraw was arrested, charged with trespassing, and later admitted to a hospital for psychiatric evaluation. Usher obtained a restraining order against her. In a YouTube video, Jones Rakestraw denied being a stalker, alleging Usher had defamed her character. She claimed financial support and promises for her music career. Days before the incident, Usher spoke of the challenges of parenthood and the importance of being present for his sons. The intrusion into Usher's home shed light on the complexities of fame and the length some individuals may go to in pursuit of it.
In 2016, two 911 calls from Larsa Pippen, ex-wife of basketball star Scotty Pippen, shed light on alleged marital problems. 911, what is your emergency? Welcome over here, please. Hello, what's your emergency, ma'am? My husband's gotten crazy again with me. Okay, and what city are you in, ma'am? Fort Lauderdale. Okay, and what do you mean your husband's gotten crazy with you again? He's breaking things, he's just scaring me. And where is he now? I just the room because I called you. I don't know. Okay, your husband's white, black, or Hispanic? Black. Okay, and are there any injuries, ma'am? Ma'am? No. You're not injured? No. And how long ago did this happen? A minute ago. I'm sorry, you said one minute? Yeah. And what color shirt is he wearing? Blue. A blue shirt? What color pants? Yeah, I don't know. And what part of the home are you in? Master bedroom. Are there any weapons involved? No. Okay, ma'am. I will get the units out there for you, okay? They're en route. 911, Hello? what is your emergency? Can you send someone over here? My husband's being really aggressive with me. What's the address of the incident? <laughs> Hello? Is it verbal or physical, ma'am? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Is it verbal or physical? Verbal. What's the address of the incident? There's, there's no incident, ma'am. Well, can you talk to this lady? Hello, ma'am. Yes. What's the address of the incident? I'm with you. Okay, talk to you. What city? No, I just canceled it. Just canceled it. Are you sure, ma'am? Yeah, just cancel it. Okay, ma'am. Because of the severity of the incident, I already have to call in and they may still respond out, okay? Scotty Pippen, a retired NBA player renowned for his tenure with the Chicago Bulls alongside Michael Jordan, faced scrutiny after his ex-wife's distress calls. Larsa made two 911 calls, suggesting marital strife and possible abuse, though no physical altercations were reported. Responding officers found Larsa in a car during the first call. She asserted that despite heated arguments, no violence occurred. The calls preceded Scotty and Larsa's divorce after 19 years of marriage. They agreed on joint custody of their four children in the 2022 settlement. Larsa, 49, is reportedly dating Marcus Jordan, 32, son of basketball icon Michael Jordan. The incident underscores the challenges faced by high-profile individuals and the complexities of personal relationships amid public scrutiny. In March 1997, the world of hip-hop was rocked by tragedy in Los Angeles, California. A member of legendary rapper Biggie Small's entourage made a 911 call following the fatal shooting of the rapper. Yeah, we need an uh, ambulance on Fairfax and Wilshire. Please, Los Angeles. We have a man shot. We have a man shot. Wilshire Boulevard. Okay, hold on. I get that. Right on the corner, Wilshire and Fairfax. Yeah, we need Wilshire and Fairfax. What? We're man shot in our car right now. We're in the car right now. We're in the hospital. I don't know. Fine, I'm gonna find your car. No. We're on Cochrane right now. We're gonna have to go west, are we? Did the fire insurance anybody just pass? No, listen, Joe, you gotta go back. You gotta turn around, Jimmy. You're going the wrong way. What the f is wrong with y'all, man? What's going on? What you doing? Okay, sir, how many people are hurt? It's one, one shot. Okay, they drove up next to us and just shot us the car on the passenger side. Okay. Take a left, man. Big, you hear me, baby? Yo, just go ahead, man. Go straight, yo. The call was made as the group raced to the hospital, desperately seeking help for Biggie, who had been shot multiple times. Despite their efforts, Biggie, only 24 years old at the time, was confirmed to have passed away at around 1 a.m. that night. 
leaving behind a profound legacy in hip-hop and music. The shooting occurred while Biggie was seated in the passenger side of a GMC Suburban. As they waited at a red light, another vehicle pulled up and unleashed a barrage of gunfire, striking Biggie four times. The identity of the assailant remains a mystery to this day, with speculations swirling around music mogul Suge Knight. Many believe the shooting was retaliation for the killing of Tupac Shakur, who was killed in a similar manner a year earlier. The killings of Biggie and Tupac marked a tragic chapter in hip-hop history, shrouded in unresolved questions and enduring speculation. In January 2012, Actress Demi Moore made headlines when a 911 call was placed from her Los Angeles home. Okay, hold on, because you got LA City. Hold on. What's your telephone number you're calling from? I'm going to give you my numbers if I don't know who's this and someone, somebody just handled to me. Uh, you can call me back on 310. Hold on. 310? Yes. Can you please send her, like, as right quick as possible? Yeah. Like right now, this is an emergency. And what's the uh, what's the other uh, cross road there? Sir, this is an emergency. You need to get here as soon as possible. Ma'am, I'm trying to get the address. You're in Beverly Hills. Yes. Okay. What is the address, Ru? Uh, let me get Beverly Hills. Hold on. Yes, that is in Beverly Hills. Can you close that door for a minute? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hold on, ma'am. There. Are you there? Yes. Okay, hold on. Beverly Hills can answer the phone right now. Beverly Hills Fire. Hey, Beverly Hills, uh, LA City Fire over here. We got a lady at... But in Beverly Hills, we need an ambulance here as soon as possible, please. Okay. Why is an ambulance not on its way right now? Ma'am, instead of so arguing long? with me why an ambulance is not on the way, can you spell it for me? I'm sorry? Instead of arguing with me, can you spell it for me, please? Okay. Okay, yes, yeah, sir, that's not going to be ours. My supervisor is advising me at LA City. That's it coming up in LA City? That's what he's advising me. Okay. Hey. All right, we'll handle this, uh, Beverly Hills. Okay, thank you. thanks. Is an ambulance on the way? Hold on, ma'am, hold on. Okay, tell me exactly what happened there. Okay, uh, she smoked um, something. It's not marijuana, but it's similar to it's, it's similar to incense, and she seems to be having convulsions of some sort. Okay, are you with the person at this time? I, I'm actually in the other room. Okay, you gotta, yes. you gotta go. You gotta be next to her so I can ask some questions. That we have paramedics on the way. Okay. How old is she? I have to be right next to her. Okay, hold on. How old is she? She is. How old is Demi? Hold on a sec. You guys, you guys. I have a paramedic. They need to. Just roughly, yes? roughly. Okay, we just need an ambulance here. Ma'am, you can't. Yeah. Listen to the question. How old is she? Roughly. How old is Demi? Forty-nine. Okay, right now is she awake? Yes. Well, semi-conscious, barely. Okay, is she breathing? Is she breathing? Yes. Okay, and she over so no. Uh, uh, she's convulsing. Okay, listen to me. Keep watching her closely. Don't do anything. Uh -huh. Don't put anything in her mouth. Um, we're was, not. Was this accidental or intentional? Uh, well, it was. She smoked something, you know, but the reaction was accidental. Listen, help is already on the way. I'm looking at the okay. map. It looks like. And how long is it? You get in your local fire station and you just do stuff, ask questions, and listen to what I gotta ask you, okay? Yes, hold on. I'm giving you to another person. When they get here, they must hit the gate code, which is. Okay, ma'am. Sir, the gate code when okay, they get here. Okay, listen, listen. Send somebody down to the bottom of the gate to open the gate for the paramedics. Okay. Are they down there? You got no. They're already on the way. Okay, great. Can you, um? Ma'am, listen to what I'm asking you. Pay attention, yes. okay? Yes, I hear you. Come on at the gate. Is she breathing normally? No, um, no, not so normal, but uh, more sort of shaking, okay. both things to me, uh, but burning up. All right. And what does she take? Um, some form of uh. I think, a, and then she smoked something I didn't really see. Okay. Um, she's been having some issues lately with some other stuff, so I don't know what she's been taking and not All right, listen, telling us. Help is already away. Stay in line with me until we get there. Looks like Halsom uh, Road is the major street there, right? Looks like... Uh... Can you guys give me Andrea? Get me Andrea. Get me Andrea. Hello, sir. Okay, and then... The... To me. To me. She's moving. She's squeezing right here. She's okay, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Are you, yes. are you are you next to her right now? Yes, I am. Yes. And I'm trying to do two things at once. So what do you suggest I can do to make anything better? All right, this is help, help is already on the way. Yeah. Okay, all we're going to do right now, we're just going to watch her closely. We're not going to give her anything sweet or drink. Okay.
Okay. Nope, I'm just, I'm just taking cold water and putting it on her back because she is burning up. I don't know what would have made her do that. Okay. Andrea, is they, do you someone have to open the gate? Make sure someone's down at the gate to open it. Is that a dirt road? Is that a private road? What is that? It's a private road. Okay, then have somebody go to the very bottom where the uh, normal uh, road is at. That way they can flag them down when they get Coming there. in through, yes. Yes, I'll send someone out there. James? Sir? I'm right here, ma'am. It was she's bringing up, do you suggest, and just keep putting cold water on her? No, no, this is what I want you to do. Are you, are you next to her right now? Yes. Okay. Is she able to respond to you? To me, can you hear me? Yes, she's squeezing. Yeah, she's squeezing hands. She can't speak. Okay. Uh, if, she, okay. If, if she's not completely passed out, this is what I want you to do. Don't give her anything to eat or drink. Mm -hmm. Okay, have her rest in a position of comfort. Wait for the paramedic. Yep, but okay. she's convulsing, so we're holding her down. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to hold her down. Don't, okay. put, don't put anything on her mouth. Don't hold her down. Don't do okay. CPR. And I turned her head to the side. Right, good. Just keep watching her. Anything comes out of her mouth, just wipe it down. Okay. Uh, and she's able to talk to you, or she's able to understand what you're asking her, so she's not completely passed out. No. So right now, we're just going to watch her until the paramedics get there. I really just think she's nervous to the music. Okay. And just keep watching her. I'll hang up. No, no. Please, please, please. I, I don't know. Um, hold on, sir. I'm just holding her head. Um, I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, just, just if anything comes out of her mouth, just make sure that we wipe her mouth and note. Make sure that we keep an airway open. Okay. Uh, regardless of whatever okay. happens, make sure that the airway is open. Even if she passes out completely, that's okay. Stay right with her. Make sure that you guys don't put anything on her. Don't give her anything. And whatever she took, make sure that you have it out for the paramedic. Okay. Has she done this before? I, I don't know. There's uh, been some stuff recently that we're all just finding out. Is she, is she a friend, relative? Who is she? Friend. Okay. Hey, James, can, I'm sorry, sir. I'm just going to hold your head and put you on the phone with somebody else. I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay, cool. I'm here with you. All right. Just make sure that you just keep watching or let me know if anything changes. Help is already on the way. Okay. Just make sure you have somebody at the bottom of the gate. That way, uh... Yeah. They're down there right now. Because I'm looking at what appears to be, uh... Okay, there it is. We got to go towards the right where... The yeah, where there's like a gate entrance. So it's kind of a right and then a right. Right. Okay. All right. Just just keep watching. Let me know if anything changes. Uh, okay. She, she seems to have calmed down all of a sudden and speaking. All right. Make um, sure that you don't give her anything to eat or drink. And if, even if she starts convulsing again, uh, okay. just just keep watching. Don't put anything in her mouth and keep okay. any, any so, dangerous up to, objects away from her. So just... Uh, okay. So, so no water, no nothing? No, nothing. Nothing until they get there. Because in case they have to give her medicine, we don't want her getting sick. Right, right. Okay. That sounds good. So you get in your local fire station, so they're coming up the hill there. Great. Okay, great. It's a house sort of right on the corner before it turns. Yeah, they're coming down. How's she doing right now? Are you there, sir? Hello. Okay, make sure you don't hang up. Okay, yeah, no, no, I'm staying with you. How's she doing right now? She's much calmer. Okay, good. Hey, anything um, change? Is she still breathing okay? Yeah, okay. yeah. Now, she, now she's breathing fine. She's not convulsing, and she's breathing fine. She seems very calm. She's leaning up and sort of talking quiet. Let me know when you start hearing the paramedics. Okay, close to me. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm right here. It looks like they're at the gate right now. Okay. Can you see somebody? Can you see that location uh, from your house at the gate? No, I can't. And you said you have somebody at the gate, right? Um, that's what they said. Are those the lights okay. coming up from the thing? That looks, it looks like they're right here. Will you run out and get them, babe? Okay, great. I'm going to stay on with you for just one more second in case that didn't know. Yeah, let me know when uh, you see them coming up the uh, hill there. They should be at the gate right now. Yeah, yeah, Here, I can hear the car. Okay, so you can see the paramedics? Yeah, I can see them right now. Let me know when they're coming up. Yeah, here they come. Right in here. They're right here now. I've got them. Okay, okay. Go, go ahead and talk to them. They're going to help you out. Okay, thanks for the help. Thank you so much. On the evening of January 23rd, 2012, emergency services responded to a 911 call from Demi Moore's residence in Los Angeles. While the specifics of the call were not disclosed to the public, it was reported that the actress was experiencing health issues and required medical attention. Moore, who had recently announced her separation from then-husband Ashton Kutcher, was reportedly struggling with exhaustion and other health concerns. The incident occurred amidst speculation about the toll that personal and professional stressors were taking on her well-being. Following the 911 call, Moore was transported to a hospital for treatment. Initial reports suggested that she was seeking professional help for exhaustion and to address her overall health. However, subsequent reports indicated that substance abuse may have also played a role in her hospitalization. The media coverage surrounding Moore's health scare was extensive, with speculation and rumors circulating about the circumstances that led to the 911 call. The incident served as a reminder of the intense scrutiny and pressure that celebrities often face, 
particularly during challenging personal times. In the wake of her hospitalization, Moore entered a period of recovery and sought treatment to address her physical and emotional well-being. Her representatives released statements acknowledging her decision to prioritize her health and seek professional support. The incident sparked a broader conversation about the importance of mental health awareness and the need to destigmatize seeking help for emotional challenges. Moore's openness about her struggles helped to shed light on the fact that even successful and seemingly put together individuals can face difficulties and require support. Demi Moore's 2012 health scare served as a poignant reminder that celebrities, like all individuals, are not immune to the challenges of mental health and personal struggles. The incident highlighted the importance of prioritizing self-care, seeking help when needed, and fostering a supportive environment that encourages open discussions about mental well-being.